Hey everybody, what do bring you guys another video? It's been quite some time, yes I know, I know. That I got the new internet, alright, I got that high speed internet now, none of that Wi-Fi crap, I'm done with that life. And I've been doing a lot of Twitch, so I've been streaming a lot of Smash, a lot of Splatoon 2, man I love that game. And I've had people come to my stream, they played me, they're like, yo man, I've seen your video, man, I like your video, man, they help me a lot, I'm like, yes! Mission complete. And then we play, and then I notice that they're very aggressive. Right? They'll come down with a lot of this, or they'll just do this very telepathically, and they want to come down swinging. Same thing with the bear. Sometimes they overextend with tossing out bears like that, and they just leave themselves open. Um. So when I see that. It makes me think that, okay, there might have been something that I didn't cover in my videos, or maybe I did cover it and I didn't explain it that well, because, you know, sometimes people mess up. Maybe I messed up. All right, so this is what this video is for, to give you guys the optimal way of playing Peach and Daisy. For the sake of this video, Daisy, they were just going to say Daisy, all right? So playing Daisy. This character requires patience. If you don't have any patience, you're not going to do too hot. The only type of people you're really going to be is people that don't know how to fight this character. All right? And even if they don't know how to fight her, there's certain characters that they could play very flowchart happy, just toss out a thousand attacks per minute, and you're most likely going to get hit. All right? Or they just have projectiles. You're just going to get run to a lot of stuff. Okay? So... I am going to cover those aspects in this video here. So you're going to need patience with these characters. All right, you're gonna need patience with Daisy. Why? Because their move set. Their move set does not allow you to play like you Sheik. Okay, Sheik has good frame data and can be safe. Peach and Daisy, they don't got frame data like Sheik. Okay, this leaves you open. If you're doing this, dude, anybody can see that. People, people can see this. They're like, a smart player is not going to fall f for... Yeah, go ahead, hit me. Hit me so I can back away and come down like this. They, smart player is not going to fall for that. And a lot of characters, they just see you doing this. If they got a projectile, they don't even, they don't even got to be close to you. They're just going to snipe you out the air. Or some character, they could just jump in at you. Like, if you do this with swordy, they can just jump at you with their sword and just cut you, cut you down. Okay? And if you're overextending like this, especially on shield, there's certain characters like Yoshi. You touch Yoshi's shield like this, he's just gonna kick your ass. Like literally, he's gonna kick your ass. You're just gonna jump near you. You're gonna get kicked, all right? So what you need to be doing is, you gotta be patient, man. If you don't got no patience, then you, like I said, you're gonna have a bad time with this character. Due to their moveset, it's just too slow, overextending like this, it could leave you open, um, especially on whiff with fast characters or projectile. Fast character, they can just close the gap on you quick, punish you out of your recovery. They time it right. Um, yeah, this too from the waist up, you kind of open, and characters can just jump in at you. All right. I recommend playing characters that could teach you the fundamentals. The basic fundamentals of Smash slash fighting games in general, because you're going to need that with Daisy. You're going to need it. So characters for that, I recommend Mario, Kirby, and Marf. I picked these three characters because to learn the basics of fundamentals and not struggle too much, these characters can teach you it. In terms of pressure, they can jab pressure. They have good tilt to spacing. Um, they can edge guard. They can juggle. They can frame trap. They got combos. All that. Their recoveries are okay. No, they're all right. Um, they will teach you all that, and I highly recommend to learn patience and stepping up your mental game. Highly recommend that you check out the video that I made on how to practice your mental game. I have that in the description below. I've gone through steps on how you can practice on your own to improve that in training mode. 
I strongly advise that you guys do that on a consistent basis, and I guarantee you, you will see a change on how you think, how you play. You'll be more patient. You'll see more openings. Recommend you do that, or you get all your likes back. Okay, likes back guaranteed. So, before that out the way, you need to learn your fundamentals, right? Make sure them shit is strong. If they're not strong, highly recommend take a break from this character and go to the other three. Or you can practice them with this character if you want. You're just probably gonna have a hard time. But however you wanna, whatever role you wanna take it, don't you get there, all right? As long as you got patience, there's two things you're gonna be doing a lot. You're gonna be doing a lot of waiting, okay? Said, that's what you need page for. You're gonna be doing a lot of waiting because if your move set, you go on aggressive, they can leave you open. We already established this, okay? We already did. Um, what you want to be doing while you're waiting is you don't want to be still if you don't have to. If you don't have to be still, keep moving. Don't try to block a lot of attacks, okay? Let me tell you something about um, shield grabbing. Some people might not know this. Shield grabbing is nerfed in this game. Somebody touches your shield, you're stuck in your shield for, I think, three frames. Three to four frames, something like that before you can shield grab. Alright, so there's an attack where like, yo, you know what? I should have shield grabbed me. Why the hell did he get away from me? That's why. Okay, shield grabbing is nerfed in this game. For those that didn't know that, now you know. So sometimes it's not worth trying to shield and shield grab somebody, depending on the attack. So if somebody's like jumping around and whatnot, uh, if you're able to move, just move. Don't sit there. Unless they do something that you know you can punish. Other than that, no. Okay, a good example of that is um, D. Lee's Nair. Like if D. Lee nerfs your shield in a certain way, even if it's really close and you can't shield grab you, he could like down tilt you before you get the shield grab out or he can move out the way, okay? So yes, moving. When you're moving around, one, you're not as telepathic, okay? And if your opponent swings at the wrong time, they can get blown off for it, all right? You're not still. So even if they do hit you, it's not free. They just either make a, they either A, made a lucky guess, or they either baited you to do something, or there might be a little, a little pattern that they might have caught on with how you're trying to move around, so. So yes, move around, whether you got a turn up in your hand or not, having a turn up is definitely recommended because your options of attacking and being safe are good because you can punish from a distance instead of having to be this close, like this, you know what I'm saying? So move around. And then there's two things you want to look for, slash pay attention to. How often your opponent attacks and when they decide to go on the defensive, whether they whiff an attack and like, oh shit, okay. Um, or they do something like this, okay? You have to pay attention to how your opponent's attacking. Like, what attacks they're throwing out, why. Some people, they just autopilot, just, just mash, mash moves, and whatnot, but whatever it is, you gotta, you gotta look out for that. And then when you see that, now you try to pick your spots on attacking, like, okay, maybe I can get him on his landing, as the example I gave with, I fought Peach and Daisy players. Like they want to do this a lot and come down swinging. Same thing with the bear. So I'm just like, okay, I'm gonna be right here. I'm gonna keep moving. I'm gonna act like I'm gonna attack, but I'm not. And then they come down with the fair. Boop, got him. Okay. So once you see that, afterwards, if they overextend, like if they come down with an attack or something, and then they want to mash a jab or whatever, you, you you give up the hit a few times to see what they do after an attack is done. So the example, this example here, they come down with an attack, then they want to mash, be like, okay, I'm going to bait them to come down. After they come down, I'm not going to try to punish. I'm going to wait because they're going to swing, thinking I'm going to attack them. Got them. Woo! Okay. Um, a good example of this is uh, with Palutena. For those that have trouble with Palutena, uh, if you notice that Palutena likes to jump down with a Nair or Space Bears, it's mostly fairs and bears at times, right? On landing, right when they're about to land, if you position yourself properly, you can side beat Palutena for free. Because I think her bear is 12 frames of landing lag. 
all right? So if you're right here as Palatine is about to land and you time a side B, you can punish her landing every time. And that's literally you waiting because it's kind of hard to challenge somebody who's jumping around all day and tossing out freaking bears or fairs as Polly. And sometimes you try to jump at them, the Polly's just gonna nail you. So the best way to deal with that is to punish people after they attack, been an attack or their landing. So in Palutena's case, since a lot of them like to jump, upon their landing, time it right, side B. Okay? If it's a fair, you could time a, a turn up toss, if you're good at that. If it's a bear with Palutena, don't try to punish with a turn up because that shield that she has on the bear, it, I noticed that it blocks it. Oh shit. She's not blocking that ass though! Woo! But anyway, so yeah. With that example, see how I have to wait? I can't just go in and swing at Palutena. Even though I see her jumping a lot, and I'm noticing that nonsense, it's pissing me off. You know what I mean? You know, like, F it, man. So I just did homework, and I'm like, oh, shit. 12 frames of landing lag? I, I don't know if it's the bear or the fair. I think it's the bear, though. Her fair is, is close to those numbers. But either way, on landing, that's when you want to punish. And then after you get a hit, now you can go aggressive. Right now, you you can go ham. You only go aggressive when you get a hit, or somewhat aggressive when you force a, a defensive option, it's just a shield, or they're rolling side step. You know what they're gonna do? Then you pressure them. Okay. So aggressive when you get a hit slash pressure somewhat, and then other than that, you you literally have to wait, man. Yes, you can space a few moves here and there, but don't overextend. Especially against fast characters, okay? If you do this, and then you try to go for another one, characters that are quick, like Sonic, Captain Falcon, Fox, they get you coming at you with a dash attack, and then just hit you, okay? Because they're fast. Dash attack or the time right, could probably grab you. Um, so yeah, don't overextend when you're spacing being safe, because again, you do this too much, you can literally be left open. Like, her bear is six frames, okay, which is not bad, but doing this too much, like, if it's, like, at a telepathic way or whatever, character can just run and dash attack you, you get hit with a projectile, sword characters, they just don't give a shit, they'll just jump at you with an air or something, right, so, got, got to be really, really, really careful with that, and I, I think that, that, that's basically it, man, like, I'm trying to keep it as simple as I can, because... I don't know, sometimes if I go into too much detail, it might be too confusing. But at times, I like to go into detail so you can understand every aspect. And I try to cover future questions and concerns. So just a basic rundown of everything. You got to wait. Right? You're, you're going to be playing a, a waiting game. You're going to do a lot of waiting. Um, probably at times, a lot of shielding. Just shield the right attacks, don't shield the wrong ones. Um, and yeah, basically, yeah. and then when you get a hit or the opponent defensive, you know, you apply shield pressure. This to this, this is also good. People have people may have trouble landing the nair or spacing a nair, but if you space a nair, you're safe. It's like negative two, right? You can, if you sense danger after a nair, you can like move out the way or something. So, space the nair on shield. To a, a place down to and and all that okay so once you get a hit then you go aggressive after your combo is done and you try to trap frame trap your opponent to like get more if you can't get any more you mess up your frame trap or you get strong whatever neutral resets okay aggressive mode is over switch go back to D I right, go back to the D mode and then once you get a hit um, you see an opening um, you force your opponent on the defensive, then you switch to A mode. All right, you're gonna be switching back and forth until you win the match. Okay, that's what you're gonna be doing. That to me is the most optimal way of playing Peach and Daisy in Super Smash Bros. Ultimate. All right, I feel like it was something else that I was supposed to. Uh, cover too. But yeah, I basically just because some people to see high level play of Peach and Daisy. 
and they they want to force a lot of stuff especially when they're in danger like if they're high percent they're about to die and they're here like i i see too many too many people always want to do this always want to come down swinging like you're not at the percent to be doing this especially you're at death percent and your opponent's at like 54 like okay if you hit them Okay, cool, the match keeps going. If they hit you, your stock is gone. It's not worth it. All right, you gotta look at your percent. Your percent tells you what you should and should not be doing. All right, your percent doesn't only tell you how much damage you have. That's like a freaking alert. It is a guideline to let you know like what you can and cannot be doing right now, All right? And again, it's like fear. People have fear, people panic, and these type of situations, you gotta be patient too. Not just while playing neutral and trying to figure out how to hit your opponent. You gotta be patient too when you come back. That's why people, if you watch some of my videos or you see me play on stream, when I'm hit and I'm coming back onto the stage, I do this. Or I do this. Even if I'm in tumble, right? If, let me. Uh, actually, you get the idea. We're gonna call my character in tumble. But if I'm in tumble, like my character just spinning while they're in hit stun, I don't even mash. At times, I don't mash. I don't mash to this. I don't mash to there. Nothing. I literally just keep tumbling. I tumble to the ledge. Tumble before the ledge. Before. Under it, or I come to a side B. Okay, I, I just do that. Or sometimes as I'm falling, I'll double jump, and then I'll still go for the ledge. Even though if I double jump like this, I could probably go on stage. But depending on the opponent, I'm just like, nope. Why? Because I don't want to get hit. I'm in a bad spot. Why am I gonna swing and make the situation worse? I make I'm giving my opponent easier time to hit me. Because I just exposed myself. I left myself open. Even if at that moment they didn't take the opening, it's still dangerous. Because I, I could die, especially if I'm at kill percent, if I'm bleeding. You know? Like, no, F that, Ben. I'm in a bad spot. Fuck you. I'm worrying about me. I gotta get back on stage. Because how am I supposed to beat the opponent if I'm dead? Don't think about that. How, how am I supposed to do that? I, I, I can't. It don't work that way. All right, so, so that's the video, all right? If you guys got any questions, concerns, anything that I missed, anything that you don't understand, I have a Discord. I have Twitter. I have the YouTube comments. I have my Twitch streams when I go live. You guys can pop up there and ask me questions too, all right? I answer like a thousand questions on, on Twitch. So, yes. Anything that you found confusing in this video, any other advice from Optimal Play, uh, questions, concerns, again, all that, just hit me up there, all right? Thank you all for watching. Thanks for my new subscribers, as well as my veteran subscribers. All you guys together, freaking savages. And I'll see y'all next time. Peace off.